Unit 5 Biology. Uh, this is the first Unit 5 Biology. The first section, B1, is about the cardiovascular system. And this first video is about the heart. So uh, what the heart does, uh, the structure of the heart, what all the bits are called, uh, how signals travel through the heart as well. So here we go, the heart. Here's some basics. The heart is a pump uh, and it pumps blood. Uh, it's actually two pumps next to each other. We'll see in a minute. It's mostly muscle. Um, it pumps blood to the lungs and it pumps blood to the rest of the body. Uh, it's about the same size as your fist. If you make a fist, uh, that's how big your heart is, roughly. Uh, and it's also kind of that shape as well. It's located in the middle of your chest, um, kind of leaning towards the left a little bit, uh, and uh, protected by your rib cage as well, because it's very important, your heart. Here's a very simple diagram. Um, now, so you'll notice that there's two pumps. There's the right side and the left side. A little confusing at first, but if you imagine looking at a, a picture of a person, then their right hand would be on the left as you look at it. So that's why the diagram is like this. There are four chambers. So at the top, we have the atria, so there's the right atrium and the left atrium. If you live in a big posh house, then uh, as people come in your front door, they come into the atrium where you welcome them. Uh, so the atrium is where the blood comes in. Uh, then you have the ventricles at the bottom. So from the body, the blood comes into the right atrium uh, and it goes through a valve, in fact, you see the blood comes in from the body through the right atrium and it goes through this valve here uh, to the right ventricle and then from the right ventricle it goes to the lungs through the uh, from the pulmonary artery then from the lungs it comes back and it goes into the left atrium and it goes through a valve into the left ventricle uh, and from there, it's pumped to the body from the, through the aorta. So that's a very simple diagram. Uh, so your atria and your ventricles. Okay, I'm starting to make the diagram a bit more complicated now. Um, from the right ventricle, it goes to the lungs. Well, it actually goes up like this and it splits. Uh, because it goes to your left lung and to your right lung. So the pulmonary artery is at the top there and it splits. Uh, a bit more complicated. From the left ventricle, uh, it actually goes up and around over the top. And that is the aorta at the top there. That's the dorsal aorta. So the blood leaves the ventricle and goes up the top there. And then there's branches from the aorta there. This is the main artery, okay? Uh, and then a big branch comes back down again and that goes to the body, okay? To the legs and to the, the liver, to the digestive system, etc. So our diagram is starting to look a bit like uh, this, which is what you might see in a textbook, okay? Like this complicated version of the heart here. Uh, we need to know the vena cava. Now that's the main blood vessel from the body. Uh, you've actually got the superior vena cava from above and the inferior vena cava from below. But the vena cava, vena as in vein, veins go to the heart, arteries go away. So the main blood vessel from the body is the vena cava. Uh, going to the lungs is the pulmonary artery. Pulmonary means lungs and arteries away from the heart. So the blood going to the lungs, and as I said earlier, that splits and some goes to the, the right lung and some goes to the left lung. That's the pulmonary artery. The pulmonary vein, uh, veins go to the heart, so that's going from the lungs to the heart. 
and so blood comes through the pulmonary vein into the left atrium uh, where it goes through a valve into the left ventricle and then from the left ventricle the main artery going away from the heart is the aorta so that's the aorta the main artery so learn those it's important you know those a uh, couple more bits uh, the septum is the dividing wall between the left and the right side so uh, let's go let's go green so there's some of the septum there and there's some of the septum there and this divides the the right and the left side of the heart you've actually got a septum dividing your uh, nostrils or you should have anyway um, myogenic muscle now this basically means that um, the heart the muscles of the heart uh, contract due to signals which come from the heart itself most of the muscles in your body are controlled by your brain but the muscles of the heart the signals that make it beat that make these muscles contract come from the heart if you actually cut somebody's heart out then the heart would keep beating for a while because the signals that make it beat come from the heart itself as we shall see we're going to talk a lot about that in a minute okay so uh, valves valves are very important they only allow blood to flow one way the correct way uh, and the valves are made up of strong thin flaps of kind of like skin or cusps okay uh, we'll see looking at this diagram here if you've got high pressure there and you've got low pressure there then the blood will flow through the valve if you have high pressure there and low pressure there then the valve will close yeah the flaps will close and blood can't flow so whether the valve is open or closed depends on the difference in pressure either side of the valve we say the pressure differential yeah the difference in pressure okay will determine whether the valve is open or closed we need to know the names of some valves now I'll show you these on the diagram in a minute but between the right atrium and the right ventricle you've got the tricuspid valve uh, tricuspid because there are three cusps like that uh, between the left atrium and the left ventricle you have the bicuspid valve or another name for it is the mitral valve uh, bicuspid because there are two cusps like that uh, then uh, from the heart to the aorta you have a valve and to the pulmonary artery you have a valve and they're called semilunar valves okay they are actually tricuspid as well but they look very different from the tricuspid valve uh, they're called semilunar valves apparently they look a bit like the moon so now uh, this diagram i actually pinched from a, an old past paper so it's very likely that if this comes up in the exam this is the diagram you should know okay uh, how many of the labels can you fill in on that diagram there's a lot of them you know in biology you, it seems to be half of biology is learning what things are called um, I've done a diagram on the right which shows you the flow of blood so how many can we you, you see how many you can name and I'll show you the answers in a couple of seconds so the answers are so we start with the the vena cava so we have blood coming in there that's the superior that's the inferior vena cava and that blood goes into the right atrium so this is the right atrium here I should be using blue really for blue blood okay so that's the right atrium from the right atrium it goes through this valve here which is the tricuspid valve so the blood goes through the tricuspid valve into the this chamber which is the right ventricle the right ventricle from the right ventricle when that has a squeeze the blood goes through this valve here and that is a semilunar valve 
yeah, a semilunar valve, and that goes to the pulmonary artery, and from the pulmonary artery, it goes to each of the lungs, okay? So this label is the pulmonary artery. From the lungs, we have the pulmonary vein, the pulmonary vein, so the blood comes back and it goes into the left atrium, so that is the left atrium. From the left atrium, it goes through a valve, uh, and that is the bicuspid valve, or the mitral valve. We'll call it the bicuspid valve, okay? Uh, into the left ventricle, okay? The left ventricle. Then the left ventricle has a squeeze. The blood goes through another semilunar valve. That's another semilunar valve. Uh, and that goes to the aorta, which is the main artery. So there you go, the dorsal aorta. So lots of labels, lots of names of things you need to learn. And there's more. Let's talk about the impulses which control the beating of the heart. We need to know this. Now, the, I said that the impulses come from the heart itself. They come from this bunch of cells here called the sinoatrial node or the SAN. So this is the pacemaker. Yeah, the pacemaker produces the impulse uh, that makes the heart beat and it does it from 60 to 100 beats per minute. OK, so this produces the impulses that make the heart beat. And first of all, these impulses make the atria contract. So that's the first thing that happens is that the atria contract, yeah, the atria muscles contract. Then the signal reaches this thing here, which is called the atrioventricular node. Now, one interesting thing that that does is it produces a delay. There's a delay of about 0.2 seconds before the signal carries on. Now, why should there be a delay? Because we want the atria to contract before the ventricles. The blood comes in the atria, it receives the blood, then the blood gets squirted into the ventricles, and then the ventricles contract. So we want there to be a delay, okay? One thing you should definitely revise in unit one, the PQRS, yes, do you remember that, ECG? Yeah, so you've got P and then the QRS complex and then the T. Revise that, okay? You sh this is very, very relevant to that. So it introduces a delay of about 0.2 seconds and then the signal travels down, okay? Down the heart to the ventricles through something called the bundle of Hiss. That's a great name, the bundle of Hiss, which splits in two and one goes to the right side and one goes to the left side, okay? And that signal will make your ventricles contract, okay? And these fibers here will branch into lots and lots of little branches into the muscles of the ventricles. Uh, and all the little branches are called these Perkin J fibers. The Perkin J fibers carry the signal to the actual muscle. You need to know SAN, sinoatrial node, you need to know, and fact, basically everything on this diagram, the bundle of Hiss, you need to know what that is, Perkin J fibers, you need to know, you need to know about the 0.2 second delay, okay, could get a question on this. Lastly, how to calculate the cardiac output. So the cardiac output is basically the volume of blood which is pumped by the heart every minute. And so the volume of blood pumped by, or in any amount of time, it's usually per minute. So it's the number of beats per minute multiplied by the volume per beat, okay? And that's called the stroke volume. So beats per minute multiplied by the stroke volume is the volume of blood pumped by the ventricle uh, per minute. 
for a healthy person, you're talking about five liters of blood per minute, uh, and that's 70 beats per minute, 70 milliliters per beat. So 70 times 70 milliliters is uh, seven sevens of 49, so 4,900 milliliters, which is about 4.9 liters.